due to the unfortunate situation that's going on in the world right now there has been a surge of the amount of people that are joining these avenues so i feel like the more fishes you have the more option there is and the more difficult it becomes by no way am I putting a damper on the app that I was using or the whole method on a whole. I'm just sharing one of my experiences. And for the person that I did meet, I don't have him on social media. We don't have no contacts with Quite World. We have no links. Um, I don't know anyone that knows him, so he won't see this uh, video, hopefully. So yeah, this is... Um, I think to start it off, I need to explain what my thoughts are with online dating. Now, rewind to like five, six years ago, we, you know, people close to me were joining these websites to find the other half. And I, as narrow-minded as I was, could not understand why someone would join an online dating app to find the other half. Like, could you not find someone in the real world? Like, I feel so ashamed saying it, but I'm just going to be truthful about it. Fast forward five, six years, I'm in this same situation where I, you know, I'm at the age where I should be finding someone. My parents are constantly in my ear putting X amount of pressure on me to join an app and initiate something because where else do you find someone in the real world? Like, you don't just walk down the street and someone approaches you and bang, you get married. I mean, yeah, maybe that's worked for people, but it's, no one's ever really approached me and said, oh, here's my number, do you want to get to know me? Like, it, like... It doesn't happen. I don't work with anyone that knows anyone. I just, yeah. So after going on a little Costco trip with my daughter's father, we were sitting down and talking to each other. And I said, so you must be excited to move on and find someone else. Like, you know, start up that whole dating thing. And he said, yeah, you know what? I'm so excited to meet new people and go through the whole process because when I, did it initially, the first person I got with was you. And I felt so deeply offended, like that scenario stuck with me when I was trying to push myself to get on a dating app and start the process, like this bitch. Well, I decided to join a app called Muzmatch, which is for supposedly single Muslims looking for, for marriage. I came across a profile that I thought was quite interesting. I thought, you know what, let's just test the waters, give it a go. Now, I am that socially awkward person that does not talk on the phone. I literally reply about days later, like I'm just so bad at the whole conversating part, which is so important. But eventually after some time, you know, he says, maybe we should meet. And I thought, you know what, just do it. After rearranging and arranging so many times, the day comes and, I am nervous as hell, like I just, my anxiety levels, it's like my soul's like trying to leave my body, like, you know, or imagine like about to jump off a plane, well you can't really imagine it if you've not been in the situation, I've not been in the situation, but I'm just trying to put in perspective how nervous I was, so the day comes, and of course it is winter so it's dark outside, I leave the house, I tell him to meet me in the street nearby because of course being Asian, can't have a random guy come to my house. Despite my parents knowing I joined this app, I feel like if they knew that I was meeting someone, my dad would be like, make sure you come to the house, make sure um, uh, I speak to him first and you know, he'd want to know where we're going, what we're doing, his name, his number, his address, just in case he's a murderer, like literally like that's my dad, so I didn't tell them. Now I'm walking, uh, you know, messaging him saying, yeah, I am coming, I'm on the way. Bang, I look up and I walk into my dad who is on his daily walk. I'm literally like, oh, I'm just going to the petrol station to get some cash out. I'll be back in five minutes. Like I did not want to say what I was doing. <laughs> he would have literally followed me to the guy's car, which is so embarrassing. Anyway, so I message him to say, can you come to the street? the next street because my dad is here and yeah. It took him a whole 15 minutes to get to from A to B. Like why is it taking him so long? I'm walking up and down this cold dark street. My nose is running, my hair is frizzy. I'm literally so like, I'm just like thinking in my head, should I just go home, what should I do? Where is this guy? Like what is going on? But I did stay. He finally came. I get into the car. Bear in mind my back is towards him, I close the car door, I turn around and I look at him and I'm like, 
you, do you want to prepare some that I've been talking to you? Well, I didn't say that, it was in my head, like, like I was just so confused, but um, I'm just like, hi, hello, like, hello. Being awkward as I am, we decided beforehand that we wasn't going to do like a sit down face to face dinner like normal people do. I wanted to go to McDonald's drive through instead because if he didn't like me, I didn't want him to spend the rest of the evening sitting opposite me watching me eat like an animal and thinking why am I here with this thing like, you know. Now we get to the drive through and the lady is like, hi, welcome to McDonald's, can I take your order? We don't have the milkshake, of course. And he repeats the order maybe five times. Now, this guy has a lisp. There is nothing wrong with having a lisp. I have a lisp. I don't know if it was because of the lisp or the fact that they, oh, she just couldn't hear him, which does tend to happen. He made a very rude remark and laughed at her and looked at me and laughed as if I was meant to laugh too. I don't know if it was because of the lisp and he felt embarrassed, so he tried to fizzle he tried to fizzle the situation. I come in and you're meant to treat everyone the same. Like, if she just can't hear you, you just go to the window and make your order while she's, you know, multitasking, taking someone else's order. I really don't know how these McDonald's workers do that. Now, we get our food, we're parked up, and having a general conversation. How is it being a property developer? What does that even include? And he says to me, well, I'm not actually working right now, and I, like, how do you pay for this car, like, if you're not working? And he says he is into. I'm like, okay, I'm staying with a criminal, which is fine, whatever. I like, okay, so what is it like living in Solly Hall? Like, I used to live in near Solly Hall, and he tells me, oh, I live in Spark Hill with my parents. Now, there is nothing wrong with living in Spark Hill, but it's like, who are you trying to pretend to be like? Are you trying to pretend you're Batman or something? Oh, now you're Batman, that's such a late comparison. So, he lives in Spark Hill, and I'm like, cool, I actually work in Spark Hill. Turns out that he is a patient at the practice I work at. So I'm like, okay, awkward. Does this guy see me before? Like, have I seen him before? I don't know. Um, why did I even let that slip out? Anyway, so we just come in talking and I'm like, why are you on Smash? Like, I ask everyone that same question, anyone that I've been on a date with, like, what has led you to join this up? And he tells me that, so, I'm still married. Okay. He then says, I haven't seen my uh, wife for eight months. I'm like, okay, why don't you just get divorced eight months ago if you've not seen her in eight months? He begins to tell me the whole scenario. Um, his mom went to the family safe and realised that all of the gold was missing. But initially they were looking through the house, trying to find the gold. I mean, if someone were to thief your gold, they wouldn't plant it in your house they would take it away from the house. Um, and after looking everywhere, and they finally got to his wife's drawer and they opened the drawer and within that drawer was a bag, within that bag was material, within that material was more material, within that material what materialised was one gold earring from a pair of earrings that was in the safe. And in his fit of rage his mother turns around and says, son, do not accuse your wife of stealing the gold. The gins could have taken it. Now, for those who don't know what a gin is, and I think the best way to describe it is probably just to Google what a gin is. Now, is a gin really going to come into your home, enter the code to your safe, take out your gold, plant one earring into your wife's material, 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 hide it right at the back of a drawer? Yes, I, I think a gin can do that. I mean, it is my religion, it's my belief, but do I think a gin did that in this scenario? Mm -mm. I'm As soon as he said gin, I was literally like, okay, do not have any expression. This is his true belief. Like, his family genuinely believe that gold has been taken from their family home. Now, for us South Asians, gold is such a high asset that some of us have been blessed to have. People may have some items that hold such sentimental value that's been passed on from generations to generations. 
but go to the missing like that i i felt that like no that is quite deep but to blame it on the jeans um I, I don't know how i felt about that one he then says um time went on we tried to patch things up he went on holiday and they he went to his secret stash of cash in his house now bearing in mind this guy's into he had double figures of cash in his house i don't know who has double figures of cash in their house but this guy did and he realized that the money is not there so of course who does he go to he goes to his wife that there was no sign that money has been spent or that she sold this gold there was no evidence to suggest that so like what is she doing is she giving it to her secret boyfriend who knows um now her parents decide to disown her kick her out she is now living in a woman's hospital so as he is telling me this whole story he's at this point saying that his wife has been living in a woman's hospital for the past eight months and she is pregnant with my child ready to give birth next month so not only have i sort of been catfished with someone who's pretending to be someone that they're not i was also a patient at where i work and fourthly or fifthly has a baby coming on the way with a woman that he doesn't want anything to do with like do you not want to be there for these uh, maternity appointments he says no do you not want to be there for these parenting classes which i thought are very beneficial he says no do you not want to be there for when she gives birth no do you know what you're having and his reply was yes thank fuck i am having a boy and i was like just staring down the deep dark footwell thinking why has my baby's father put me in this situation where I have to go through so many sour lemons like I could be doing this for a lifetime like why is this happening to me does this guy even know that I have a daughter of course he knows I have a daughter it's such a shame to hear that even this generation of people have that backwards mentality that having a girl puts such shame upon your family like even though he didn't want anything to do with his child he was so thankful that it wasn't a girl like if it was a girl i don't know what sort of it would put on his family like i i have really don't understand all of that and i've been in other scenarios where the same topic has jumped up and i'm like no that mentality comes from somewhere and if it's coming from your mother your mother is also a was a girl at one time i don't know I don't, that that whole topic is for another time you know when i first met this guy i knew he wasn't the one for me but with respect i just continued the evening i went home the first thing i did was get my phone pull up his pictures from was match and i was literally like how has he taken those pictures no more well shortly after he was messaging me saying oh i am driving past your workplace oh can you hear me hooting and i'm like oh no what if he comes into my workplace i just don't have the courage to tell this guy like i'm not the one for him or he's not the one for me it never happens to a point where i had to change my snapchat settings so he couldn't message me again without realizing that without me intentionally blocking him like i just thought i didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings now this is back in 2018 since then i've probably been i've probably met seven other people in the span of two years of being on and off from this app i have friends that have met their um husbands on tinder like it is the norm now but my backwards mentality five six years ago was it was wrong it's not how i see this avenue anymore but it's not working for me right now i'm hoping that due to the like i said the unfortunate situation i could maybe catch a fish but i'm not catching anything it's just not working for me if you, i even went to my daughter's father and told him the story and how how shocked i was and he didn't like i think deep down he was probably just laughing like haha bitch say a prayer for me i'm getting old i thought i would be getting married this year at least but 